there, uh, where I, you know, we forgot, just wanted to call your attention to those. A lot of the demonstration that you will see today is actually documented in our GeoNet blog done by one of our colleagues, Tom Brenneman, Crash Analysis with Insights. I'll make sure that that link gets out to everyone that's on the call today. And also, currently, there is a free trial to Insights for ArcGIS for use with ArcGIS Online on Esri's website. So, to that, we will set at the end of the presentation, so that way everyone has access to that. Um, I've indicated my name is Justin Cusick. I work on our local government team. I support cities, counties, and municipalities in New Jersey, Delaware, and Connecticut. And me are, are three esteemed colleagues. I will let them introduce themselves, starting with Rachel Whedon. Yep. Hi, everyone. My name is Rachel Whedon. I was a solution engineer and a team lead in the Esri Philadelphia office uh, on the same team as Justin. Which, uh, we cover local governments from Maryland up to Maine, and I'm happy to join today. Hello, my name is Adam Ziegler, a solution engineer on the local government team, uh, primarily focused on accounts in Delaware, New Jersey, and Connecticut. Most commonly, find me following Justin Cusick around. And I'm Daniel Wickens. I'm a solution engineer on the patterns and practice team mainly focused on platform evangelism, which means showing our customers the latest and greatest capabilities of the ArcGIS platform. Uh, we do a lot of webinars and workshops and conferences such as this. Thank you. Okay. Well, I guess we can we can kick it off, starting with uh, with Rachel going through a couple of slides. Yeah. Um, so uh, when Justin and I were talking about the agenda for today, I thought it would be useful to um, spend a little bit of time kind of level setting and providing some context for the demonstrations that you'll see today. Um, two demonstrations that are transportation focused. First, um, Adam will highlight uh, the crash analysis scenario. And the second scenario, <clears throat> excuse me, today, uh, Daniel will work with um, ways traffic alerts uh, data and insights uh, and across the platform. Typically, when I start uh, talking about insights, one of the things I like to do is give uh, context. Um, insights is a new application, as you'll see, but it's helpful to think about how it fits across the entire ArcGIS platform. Uh, one of the things that might be helpful to conceptualize this is to think about the three kind of categories or three ways that we see ArcGIS system being used. So on the phone, use GIS regularly, whether you're managing your GIS data, analyzing it to answer questions. Uh, working with other integrated business systems, there's probably a really wide variety of use cases. But we can really boil those into three key categories. One, uh, GIS that acts as a system of record. And this could be a system that manages your assets, a uh, system that you use to maintain authoritative data. If you are taking that system of record and sharing it out more broadly across your organization or to the public, um, we would call that use case of you know, using GIS as a system of engagement. More people are probably also using GIS for uh, providing a system of insight, a system that can answer complex geospatial questions. And uh, these aren't mutually exclusive. All three of these are used frequently, but it's kind of a good categorization uh, of the capabilities of our technology. And it's pretty easy to see where um, an application like Insights might fit. We see that fitting kind of squarely in the system of insight. So that helps you understand maybe how it fits um, with our platform uh, conceptual level. So from a, a technical standpoint, um, I mentioned that Insights is an ArcGIS app. And so this program helps us see where this fits in kind of the, the technical architecture that at the top tier, where you see desktop, web, and device, that, that's our application tier. Insights is a web application, so it's an app that you access through a web browser. And you, know, you might use other GIS apps like ArcGIS Pro on the desktop, or cluster for ArcGIS on a device. So this is just another interface or another client into your GIS system. So we know your GIS system can work against a variety of data sets, information coming from your servers, GIS or your tabular data servers, uh, GIS coming from other online content, other organizations. And what really brokers that connection and really helps make it easy for these client applications to tap into the underlying data is the use of a web GIS. You know, the idea that you can take these, uh, these data, abstract them as web services, uh, create web maps, and then funnel those into the right app for the user on the right device. Specifically into Insights. Insights, as I said, is a somewhat new application, and, and Esri really wanted to provide a new user experience um, using GIS data. 
And you'll see from the animation here that the user experience is really meant to be intuitive and uh, provide uh, an easy way to interact with your data. And we do that by making everything kind of oriented around the drag and drop interface. Being able to drag and drop data onto a map, being able to select data from a chart, uh, being able to drag one map onto another to perform analysis, those sorts of things. And that keeps your work focused on the visual display of your data. That visual display could be maps, charts, tables, uh, and really gives you that visual experience for working with your data. And what's unique is that it combines multiple visual at once, right? So you're not just looking at a map or a chart, really seeing those things in the context of one another, have the ability to interact and integrate uh, different visualization types with linked charts and maps. I'll talk in a bit about the the difference of data sources that Insight supports. But the in here is really that just like with other GIS applications, you're not adding just one layer or connecting to one data store. You're really working with multiple data sets at once, and that's really the beauty of being able to combine these data sets and learn new things when you do so. So I mean that uh, the, the new user experience is really something Esri was focused on in terms of driving uh, Insights um, uh, application. And one of the reasons we wanted to do this was to extend uh, your organization and could have access to some of the spatial analysis and data visualization tools that an app like Insights can provide. Plenty of people in your organization who are very familiar and work with data, they might not think of themselves as GIS professionals. And they not be people who um, you know, use of GIS warrants, you know, full kind of desktop access. So we see Insights as an application that offers a new way of providing spatial analysis to uh, that audience. And it means we can make data exploration, spatial analysis accessible to anyone in your organization. And it's that easy to use interface that really makes the difference. So rather than navigating through menus and toolbars and toolboxes, People are working at kind of the speed of thought. They ask a question, they can visually answer it with a manipulation and insights. And the other ways that insights help uh, analytics across your organization is the way that it uh, allows you to document and share your work. And you're not just maybe sharing out the end result of an analysis, you know, as a layer on a map, but you're actually able to provide a dynamic workbook um, that will um, help you communicate the work they've done within insights across your organization. So I don't know about um, about you guys if this story will resonate, but I, I work with the city of Boston a lot. Um, their GIS group right down the hall from their data analytics team. And they both were common problems, things like traffic safety and vision zero. But they use different sets of tools. You know, the GIS team uses GIS software, the data analytics team uses other software. They're working with the same data, trying to solve the same problems, but they have any common ground in terms of the way that they can access and share that data. So I really see an application like Insights as something that can bridge that gap and bring teams together when they're both interested in using the same data to solve the same problem. So Insights is a standalone application. Um, it, it really is designed to work as a part of the entire ArcGIS platform, which is why I wanted to provide that context up front. Um, it's an app that you can use in the browser. Um, when you access it through the browser, you're either able to access it via ArcGIS Online, kind of that hosted web GIS environment, or you can access it through your ArcGIS Enterprise, your own GIS on your infrastructure. So those flexible deployment options um, mean that anyone can access Insights. And we emphasize that it's um, complement compatible with many other ArcGIS capabilities. So to work in Insights, take resulting layers that you create, bring them into ArcGIS Pro for further analysis might be one example. Or uh, using uh, GeoEvent Server to manage real-time data, but being able to export a subset of that real-time feed into Insights for further spatial analysis would be a second example. I'm going to in one of the demonstrations today to give you some ideas on how that would work. So before to the demonstrations and before I pass it uh, over to Daniel to speak, um, just give you a sense of a quick workflow for Insights. Uh, typically what, what you'll do when you launch Insights is the first thing you'll do is add data. Again, this could be from multiple sources. Um, 
what I think is really interesting and eye-opening for Insights users is that they're able to tap into data that they've never used in a GIS system before. So it would be business data like from, um, <clears throat> from an asset management system or from a CRM. It could be data sets that are inherently non-spatial, but when you bring them into Insights, it's very easy to combine that with your spatial data. So that's where um, you can really bring new life to your data. And you got, after you add your data to the project, you usually will start creating maps, charts, and tables to get those different visualization types. Um, Insights are really iterative, so you're going to make plenty of bad maps and plenty of ugly charts, things that don't necessarily mean what you hoped that you get, and you can delete them and just keep 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 creating different visualizations. It's really meant to be an exploratory workflow for you to explore and analyze your data. So that's that iterative process. There's not necessarily a defined uh, thing, middle, and end. To it. And then if you can save and share your work so that you can um, share it to your colleagues or present it out on a website or any other variety of options, which we'll cover here shortly. I'll uh, let Daniel uh, pick it up from here and talk through some of the uh, ideas of um, insights uh, and the interface, and uh, he can kind of orient you a bit more so that when we get into the demonstrations, you'll be able to see that. Thanks, Rachel. So uh, she just gave a great overview on the insights its application, um, it fits into the ArcGIS platform, and now I'm going to get into a little more detail about both the user experience and the different kinds of capabilities within the application itself. So first is the uh, the layout and what you're actually seeing when you're in the Insights application, and the main pieces to uh, Insights, workbooks, pages, and cards. So you're using Insights, you're doing all of your work and analysis in a workbook. And then you organize your workbook into pages, and you can see them as the tabs on the top, uh, commercial permits and enterprise zones. This is how you're organizing your work. You might want to organize these pages by the steps of, a, of an analysis workflow or by different topics that fit within an overarching theme that you have for your workbook. It really all depends on what makes sense to you uh, and how you're, how you're doing your work. <clears throat> and we drag and drop data onto a page it's being brought in as a card. That's these, uh, this table, the donut chart, and the map you see right in the middle space. Uh, you can have one or more of these cards on each page, and these are the means of interacting with your data, visualizing it, and analyzing it. So to summarize it, um, the work stores your analysis and what's associated with it. The pages organize your analysis, and the cards are the means of analysis and visualization. In terms of adding data, um, the key point here is that you don't just have to bring in one data set, but you can bring in many different data sets from many different data sources all at once in a single workbook. Uh, so some examples of these um, uh, data sets uh, can feature layers that you have stored in your portal, whether that is ArcGIS Online or ArcGIS Enterprise. You can also bring in Excel or CSV files as well as data from the, the four listed relational databases, enterprise geodatabases that are being powered by SQL Server or Oracle. So those, those five bullet points are considered you know, your own data, but we also have, um, you can also bring in data from the Living Atlas. Uh, I've listed a few examples here uh, that are pretty common uh, to bring into insights, such as demographic data, as boundaries, you know, zip codes, county, state, what have you. But as, as you probably all know, there's a lot more in there in the Living Atlas. So I really encourage you to explore um, what's in the Living Atlas and mashing it up with your data and see what kind of analysis you can do from there. Now, I, visualizing data is is a big part of insights. Um, that's what I was mentioning when you're bringing up bringing data. It's represented as a card and you are seeing your data in, a, in probably a new way that you've never seen before. Um, so there's, there's three ways of visualizing your data, maps, charts, and tables. On the left, we have some examples of charts. On the right, there's some examples of maps. I kind of left out tables because that's kind of self-explanatory, but you'll see some tables uh, in, in both the demos. Um, see um, on the left some, some common charts that would be familiar to a data scientist, such as a scatter plot, bar and column charts, histograms, but also some more unique ones, such as a chord diagram, data clock, and heat chart, some ones that maybe you haven't seen before or, or, or a different way of seeing your data. 
And then the right, you know, I'm sure we're all familiar with these uh, different maps, you know, location, category. You can also see a heat map, a choropleth, and proportional symbol. But what's great about insights is that it's just click and it's just click within the app. You can switch between these uh, map types with a single click. Um, you don't create a new map or, or new symbology. Bring in your data onto the page. Um, a default card type will be created depending on the characteristics of the fields, meaning that you're always getting the optimal display for the data that you have. Maybe you want to look at the data in a different way from the default, but you're not really sure how to go about it. <clears throat> so Insights has, uh, or Esri has created this handy dandy infographic that goes through all the different types of visualizations within the Insights application, what cases you would want to use them. So they're categorized in in terms of the action, so maybe you want to look at a measurement or a relationship or, or change over time, um, as well as the data type that's associated with that visualization, whether it's qualitative, quantitative, or temporal. We've added this uh, link uh, for you to access this infographic. Uh, I'll have it up here on the screen, but we'll also put it into uh, the chat box uh, once I'm done doing my piece. All right, slides come up. So in terms of analysis, there's uh, two different ways uh, or two main types of analysis. And this one is interactivity. So Insights is this really slick, you know, drag and drop interface. Um, so what you can do is literally have two cards next to one another and bring data from one card onto another card and run, for instance, a spatial aggregation or a filter. Uh, in here, the first example, we're bringing in a, a, the Boston neighborhoods into some data. I believe it's arrests, and they're performing a special aggregation. You see the map change um, automatically once that's done. And then the next one here, uh, bringing in a single neighborhood and performing a filter to only show uh, the points that are within that neighborhood. Next, uh, next type is using the action button. Um, so the, the icon on the bottom right, you can click on, and you'll see that there's an option uh, or a list of spatial tools that you can use um, on your data. So the ones you're probably familiar with in rich data, um, drive times. But it also provides you a list of questions, such as how is it distributed or, or what's nearby. And then by Figuring out what kind of questions you want to ask, it will suggest the spatial tool to use. So either use the spatial tools if you already know what to run, or go through this list of questions and see what um, options you have. Then as you're doing your work uh, in Insights, um, the analysis is being captured in this analysis view. And every page has one of these views, where every step of your work is captured automatically. Now, this view can be saved and shared. Um, for example, if you wanted to rerun the same analysis um, or you had other colleagues who wanted to perform the same analysis, you could save this uh, analysis view and they could either use the same data or they can plug in their own data and just and have not go through all of that work that you just did and just come to their answer right away. Now, this um, uh, will be used to maybe document your work, uh, show it to a supervisor or um, or while you're presenting at a weekly briefing, um, show how you got your answers. And then in terms of sharing and collaboration, uh, collaboration everything in Insights is, is created and saved as an item in your content. There's different items created, such as the workbook, uh, is your entire project, um, you share certain pages and allow others to interact with the cards in a dynamic read-only view. Um, as before, you can share uh, the model, the analysis view. Any um, feature layers that get created as a result of any analysis or spatial tools you've done within Insights gets created as an item in your content. 
And it's the same sharing practices as always. It first starts out as private in your content, but you can share it with certain groups in your organization or with the entire organization. You can even make these, uh, these items public. To elaborate on that, um, you know, all of the items can work across the platform. For example, the result data sets from your analysis can be brought into ArcGIS Pro or the map viewer in ArcGIS Online or portal for ArcGIS. And you can also embed pages, um, as you're seeing here, someone's embedded a heat chart into their open data page. You can also embed these pages into um, your own organization's website um, to inform your constituents or, or external customers. This is my last, step, uh, last slide, just to um, talk about some of the, some of the things uh, along the roadmap for the insights uh, for ArcGIS application. Um, the first one is live data. So right now in this uh, current release, um, insights ingest your data and to trigger a refresh or an update, you actually have to click a button to do that. Uh, in the future, we're going to support a live connection. So when you're connected to a database, as soon as that data gets updated, that'll be reflected in your insights um, workbook. And the second point is an evolved dashboard experience. So currently the insights application is really focused on, you know, analysts and, and GIS professionals doing data exploration. But it's natural that you have other people in your organizations who just want an interactive dashboard like display of cards, just telling you telling that person, you know, what the progress is, what are the answers you found. And we're going to be working on advancing these capabilities um, for that use case. Just in the last three points really quickly. We're always looking for opportunities to extend the platform um, using the API, um, looking for more um, uh, different types of databases and, and enterprise geodatabases you can connect to. And Insights is an analysis application at its core. We're always looking at more analysis capabilities such as link analysis and predictive analytics. So um, that wraps up uh, this PowerPoint. Um, Presentation. Now we're going to get into some demonstrations and see um, some use cases of how insights can be applied. So if you could um, if you could switch over to Adam Ziegler so he can share his, <clears throat> that would be that would be great. And also, um, if anyone has any questions right now uh, while we're kind of you know switching over presenters, if you would like to type up in the chat window in the in the bottom right, feel free. Um, we can see if we can answer a question or two now. Otherwise, we'll make sure we get to them at the end. Justin, I do have, I do. Justin, we do have, do have one now. Do you want to take it? Take it. Justin, here. Can you hear me? The question is, what are the key differences between insights and dashboard? Yes. Can you hear me? Yeah. Can you okay. hear me? Yeah, we're good. Yeah, I, so the, yep, I, got, the I think I got the question. Is, the the key, key differences between insights and uh, operations dashboard, right? Yes. Yeah, so a good question. So um, it is a tool uh, that really focuses on data exploration. Um, in doing so, you might end up with a page that has some, you know, number of infographics on it, charts, maps, et cetera. And so the project and insights can end up looking very similar to a dashboard. A dashboard might also have a map and some charts and that sort of thing. So from a visual perspective, it's easy to relate the two. But I think it's useful to think about the use case and the use so insights is a tool for someone who's hands-on working with the data, asking questions, happy with the data, exploring, interested in digging in. Whereas dashboard is usually more of like a passive, maybe a read-only view, where you have indicators or live data that's kind of refreshing, and someone might not even be interacting with it. It's a very different audience. Think of like a data analyst versus maybe um, an EOC manager in terms of who you would use insights versus a dashboard. So that helped to differentiate a bit. All right, thanks, Rachel. So let's jump into a demonstration that highlights the analysis capabilities of Insights. I am working with Insights in ArcGIS Online, so we'll start there. I'm on page, and I'm going to use the App Launcher to launch Insights for ArcGIS. So, 
opens, I'll, I'll be at the landing page and I'll find the Insight workbook, workbooks that both myself and others in my organization have created. Uh, for demonstration, we're going to start with a brand new workbook, so I'll choose the new workbook button and open up a new INS project. I, when I create this new workbook, a new item is created in my content. In the example, I want to see where severe crashes have occurred near schools in Portland. Of special interest to me is how the day of the week posted speed limit may have been a factor in those crashes. On creation, I'm prompted to add some data. I'll load my MPOs or metropolitan areas. Once my loads, I can reorder my cards, rename them. So I'd like to keep things a little bit nice and neat so I know what I'm looking at. So my MPOs, my mostly my schools. is recognized right off the bat that these three data sets were spatial data sets and has automatically created the cards for them. These also have attributes. So if I expand the crashes, I can see the different attributes that come in my data. We can also see the different categorizations that Insights has discovered. Another interesting note is that it took the crash date field and broke it out into common uh, uh, a date field, whether it be a year into the quarter to a month, hour, minute. We can apply uh, filter options. So I wanted to say apply by a, a county name. I could apply a filter the county name that I wanted to look at and apply that. That in the onset of this demo, but that that is there. So pull data in directly from my attribute or from my attributes. So if I wanted to pull in the crash date into a tape into a time series, I could do that. I could also pull in uh, code data. And, and categorize that in various uh, visualization types. Apply attribute filters, which I showed you already. So now I want to focus on the Portland area. Send to the Portland area. And my other views by using the sync extent. So Portland. And apply that as a filter filter to my other cards. My work on classifying some of the crash data from I have my attribute table and a new field. I want to determine what crash severity of each incident is. So name the field and apply a function. I've chosen and prepared this calculation ahead of time. What this calculation is doing is applying a severity based on uh, fatalities, uh, injuries, major injuries. Run that. Now you say, I don't want to change my underlying data, especially data that's 
might be used by others, and that's okay, I agree with you. Uh, all this information, whether it be a, you know, a new field or a calculation on a field, is all stored within the Insights Workbook. So let me apply a filter to this data set, and I only want to show crashes that are of severity 10 or greater. So applying this, this, a filter to this field, I see a histogram, and I can simply drag to the value of 10, I, and we'll see the crashes filter down to only crashes that meet that criteria. Uh, point data doesn't necessarily give me a great picture either, so let me go ahead and change my visual, visualization type to um, a heat map. And so talking about crashes and crashes occur on streets, let me change my base maps, bring in a streets layer. of my exploration today is severe accidents near schools. So I want to uh, determine where the accidents occur close to the schools. So insights for ArcGIS, you have access to some of the most common spatial analysis tools such as buffering. Buffer, you could, along with buffering, there's other tools uh, that were mentioned earlier such as enriched data. This is where you would apply the analysis. Go ahead and create a, a buffer a fixed distance of a quarter mile. So this is the, the, the most common distance that we might find children walking to school. So we run this analysis. This analysis has been completed. I'll be able to drag that analysis into my crash data to further filter my crash data to the crashes that are within one quarter mile of each school. This re-renders, notice how the heat map has changed to show a different spatial pattern. Seeing these alts while you're working can help you understand what the data is trying to tell you. To see a week or posted speed limits, I can drag those columns in the data set or from the, from the pane into the new page and create new charting cards. Notice, drag this in and specify a visualization type. I'm prompted with the, the different types of charts that I can create. Say I want to create a column chart. Or maybe a chart isn't exactly what I want to see, so now I want to change that visualization type to maybe a bar chart. For posted speed limits, a bubble chart. I work on building the, this analysis page. Insights has been tracking all of my work. At any time, I can switch over to the analysis view that shows a model of all the tasks to create this page. I also change their properties from in here. So we're to go to the buffer. Buffering distance from 0.5 to 0.5. I simply update that buffer here, and the change would uh, get through to everything downstream. Now I click on these cards to see how these, where these uh, occurrences affect the spatial, or where they are in the where they're at. So if I click on Thursday, I can see where the crashes on they are and the posted speed limits of where those crashes occurred. At this point, I can interact with this page to get a better understanding of the crash data. As you know, there are some very specific hotspots to the map, 
That was evident when looking at the original crash points on their own. From here, from business units in a DOT could apply their expertise to interpreting the results. Safety engineers could use this to focus their efforts in those areas where safety countermeasures like guardrails will have their biggest impact. Or planners might use this analysis for more long-term corridor improvements. So sharing these pages is very important. I could take this page and share it with others inside or outside my organization. A great share insights is the story map. Here is a story map of this data that was created, and you can see the interaction that provided the map that was created uh, from this and this insights book uh, to allow you to explore the content. So this this content is read only, but it is interact. You can interact with it. Put it over to Dan for all of insights. Here, uh, switching Dan as a presenter, I saw a question come up. I'll just take a moment to answer that. Uh, question from Kenneth, does Insights use credits for analysis? Uh, it's a great question. Um, I'll paste a link in the chat window that describes this in more detail, but the quick answer is that most of the functions that use in Insights can be used without consuming credits. Um, there are some exceptions, of course. So when you want to uh, use data from a service provided by Esri, like a World Geocoding Service or the Geo Enrichment Service, or analysis services, when you use services from Esri, then uh, there's a credit consumption uh, element. So I'll paste the link that uh, offers more detail on that in the chat window. So. So for this next example, um, really good to show how Insights for ArcGIS fits into the entire uh, ArcGIS platform and how it can be used to in, to support a larger uh, analysis workflow. Um, so if you notice, I'm, I am not starting in the Insights for ArcGIS application. I'm actually in a web map. And we're in here are current ways alerts in the Charlotte, North Carolina area. We have alerts for jams, hazards, accidents, and road closures, uh, all flowing into this map in real time using the power of Geo Event Server and the show temporal big data store. With this, I'm getting a live snapshot of the road conditions. Now, if there are any patterns in the data over time, maybe there's a certain area that gets frequent alerts. Now, since I'm running this in ArcGIS Enterprise, I can utilize the capabilities of Geo Analytics Server as well as the Space Show Temporal Big Data Store to pull the live aggregation of these space alerts through space and time right out of the box. Data is being captured 24-7, so what I'm able to do is visualize this data as aggregated hexagon bins over time. I'll enable time animation on the layer. And when we look at the past couple hours, see how the morning commute was in Charlotte today. display data in 10 minute intervals. Okay? So we're at 8 a.m. this morning. When I click on the time slider, we're looking at these aggregation of ways alerts in 10 minute intervals uh, within the Charlotte area. Now, although the great visualization of the data, there's so much data being thrown at me at once that it's difficult to discern any patterns in the data. And this is getting to my analysis, and I can use some other tools to, to drill down into the data further. Now, the great thing about utilizing the spatiotemporal big data store is that it enables the archival of this high volume and high velocity observation data. So what I can do, utilize uh, these analytics tools, and copy a subset of data that's stored in the spatiotemporal big data store, copy it over to the relational data store so it can be used in other applications such as ArcGIS Pro and, you guessed it, Insights for ArcGIS. What I've done is I've copied a subset of about three months worth of just potholeways alerts because I know potholes have been a recurring problem in the area. 
and we can work with this data and insights and cover some answers. Actually, before I do that, I want to mention there's another piece to this uh, analysis that I almost forgot to show you. Before I did that, I created a emerging hotspots layer in ArcGIS Pro. Uh, and what you're seeing here um, is, uh, is the layer, and it's showing me where pothole reports are consistently a significant issue. If I zoom in, these areas in solid red represent what are called persistent hotspots. And these are areas that have been statistically significant hotspots for most of the time period being analyzed. So now I have a better defined area of where potholes are, are a constant issue. Noticing how my analysis is getting more specific and fine-grained, and now I'll switch over to Insights, where I've brought in the same subset of pothole reports and continue to drill deeper. So the first thing I want to do is take a look at whether or not there were any spikes of the pothole reports over time. And just by looking at this time series chart, we can see that there's a pretty common pattern, that there's spikes uh, from the Sunday to Monday of each week. This sense, right, because there's likely to be more drivers on the road on a Monday when people have to go to work and take their kids to school, rather than a Sunday when everyone's just hanging out at home. The observation's pretty intuitive. So I gain some additional insight by identifying a street that that has a lot of pothole reports. I'm going to bring in my street field and look at a table. We get Brookshire Boulevard, the most pothole reports for this three month period. Now I isolate this data that it's being highlighted in my map. I can actually bring it over into a new map. And I'm just going to make these. Uh, Symbols a little bit larger for us so we can see better. So now this map is just showing me the pothole reports along this one street, Brookshire Boulevard. So the next thing I want to do is make sure that these reports are legitimate and that it isn't just one disgruntled person who's mad at the city reporting, um, in fa making false reports about these potholes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to notice how once I isolated data, Actually, a new data set created. Um, this is at, uh, these are just the pothole reports for Bookshire Boulevard, and I'm going to bring in the individual ways user IDs of those 116 pothole reports. See, the count is 416, um, which reflects the 416 pothole reports. And if I uh, sort this out, by the way, these these jumbles of letters and numbers that's that's a each represents a citizen who has the Waze app on their phone and has been reporting these potholes. And if we sort this, we see that it wasn't just one disgruntled person met at the city. It is uh, hundreds of anonymous Waze users um, reporting that there's an issue and that uh, it needs to be addressed. So my step in this analysis is just to make sure that the city isn't already aware of this and isn't already addressing this issue. So what I also have is a layer of future city roadway projects. And this was uh, directly from Charlotte's ArcGIS open data page. And what I can do is I can bring this into this app as a new layer. And I'll nice the card so we can get a better view. You see, but real quick, that um, Charlotte has a lot of planned projects already. Um, but if we zoom in, See that um, Brookshire Boulevard is not one of those planned projects. Shocker. So what I've done is I, I believe I've found a great candidate for a roadway improvement project. If I wanted to share this information with others in my organization, I could easily do this by sharing the page. And you see I can share this with select groups in my organization, uh, the entire organization, as well as make this page public. And I can, if I wanted to, I could embed it in a website. Uh, for external audiences and constituents. You can also embed this in a story map. You already saw this in um, Adam's demo as well. And so I've done the same thing. I've actually added a background page to give some context as, as to how and why uh, I've done the analysis. And at the bottom here, 
Um, I have my insights page, which I've simplified just to give, uh, just with the information to um, prove my point. Um, uh, Adam mentioned that this was a dynamic read-only view, so I can also interact with the card, maybe highlight the um, Boulevard issue again. In just a few short minutes, I was able to gain additional insight about these pothole reports by doing some proactive data exploration. If insights is so simple, anyone GIS savvy or not could have gotten the same insight as I had. All right. Yeah, hopefully, uh, one thing that I wanted to um, make sure came across with Dan's demo was the use of insights as part of the larger platform. You know, um, Adam's demo really focused in on like a specific business problem, a uh, very specific. Uh, data exploration scenario, and Dan's demo, I think, did a nice job kind of broadening out and helping you maybe see where Insights fits as a complementary offering to some of the other uh, tools and analysis workflows that you might use across the platform. So I think we'll open it up to any um, questions or any other comments. Well, thanks, Dan, Adam, uh, Justin, and Rachel. Um, I don't, I'm waiting to see if any more questions come across, but that was certainly a informative uh, Web and uh, presentation of insights. So I certainly appreciate that. Um, if anyone in the audience has a question, um, as we said, again, put it in the Q&A or the chat, or I'm sure to contact them after this webinar. At the beginning, this will be on the MagTug Mag, Mag Tug website soon, um, and on our uh, YouTube channel uh, once the recording is, is published and put up there. Yeah. Uh, this is Rachel. Sorry, just one one last quick thing I thought of that might be of interest to the group. Um, if, if folks were, they'd like to uh, share this type of information with their colleagues. We actually have a free workshop on Monday in New York City. I don't know if folks uh, would be able to or are interested in sharing that. I'll paste the link in the chat. But some of you may have participated in the workshops we held here in the Esri Chesterbrook uh, Philadelphia office. We'll be doing the same thing in New York on Monday, and there are still a few seats available. So I'll paste that link in as well in case you want to. Yep. Okay. So you have one more thing coming in here. There's a question there. Um, Rachel, can you see it? Or do you want me to read it? Yeah. Yes, hold on one second. I think I, I just missed my deal. Okay, yeah. Is Live Atlas a reference to publicly available data like census, tax maps, EPA, watersheds, et cetera? Yeah, Chris, so. Uh, Good question. It'd be worth maybe explaining a little bit more about what, what we mean when we say Living Atlas. So Living Atlas is simply the term that Ezra uses for their collection of global data sets, uh, data sets that are uh, provided to you as a part of the RGS platform that reflect publicly available data like Census and uh, EPA, NOAA, other federal sources. Um, in many cases, the less content also provides information that you wouldn't necessarily be able to access from public sources. So one quick example, uh, we would take census data, you know, from the decennial census 2010, but then Living Atlas would provide a current year and then a five-year population projection. So you could access your population data, for example, or um, traffic data from one of our business partners, live traffic data. That would be something that you might not have access to outside of accessing it through the Living Atlas. So while it does the easy way to access, public label data sources, a lot of times there's a value add. Um, and I'll also mention that Living Atlas content can be accessed from any application across our platform. We share it today in Insights, but you could access it from ArcGIS Pro or ArcGIS Online as well. Okay. One more thing came across, Rachel. I'm going to send it to you in your chat window. Yes. Okay. Graphics insert from Insights into Story Maps still be functional if your Insights subscription expires. So if you create a page or uh, something uh, and you embed it uh, into an application, will that still stick around if you are no longer licensed for Insights? Uh, you create an Insights, and this is going to require a double check, but I think that you, items that you create from Insights will still be available regardless of your license. I think the license is what enables you to use insights to create new content, new materials. So, and um, maybe follow up on email, Bob. Yep. 
Well, it looks like that's all the questions that I see now in the chat and the QA. So, again, thanks for the presentation. And um, everyone on the phone, on behalf of MAGTO, thanks for attending. And uh, pay attention to our website as for upcoming webinars and events. And um, enjoy your day. Thank you, Bob, and uh, JMT Technology Group for, for hosting the webinar.